more caffeine. Um, and I think that's it. If you have any other questions about things like food, you're welcome to come find me. Um, Alex Major is a co-founder of Better Budget Keto, um, who has brought the journey together with us. I'm passionate about Toronto, public service, and better government. So he's a total party guy. Alex is the <laughs> Director of Policy for the Ontario Minister of Finance, where he worked on four provincial budgets. He holds a law degree from Harvard and is a former strategy consultant for McKinsey. So a big thank you to Alex, uh, also for being pivotal in bringing us all together today. And we're going to let him do a talk, and then he's going to explain how the afternoon sessions are going to work. Boring budget day, uh, was his term. But I think all of your presence here today uh, is a testament to the fact that boring, uh, budgets don't have to be boring. And actually, by working together, uh, by combining uh, different skills and backgrounds, people's passions, I think you can actually make a real impact on making making it better. So I'm really excited to have everybody here today. Um, the talks in the morning, I found extremely energizing. Uh, I think one of the key messages for me was. Um, the importance of organizing, the importance of um, facts, uh, the importance of bringing people together and harnessing the energy uh, that we have so much of in our city. Um, our goal really is to influence the budget process. It's not that the substance going into the budget isn't important, it is, uh, but we also think the process to get there is very important. And the other thing that's important about the process is that we think that a good process is something that people of all political stripes uh, can and should agree to. Uh, and so really our goal is to influence, is to make this into a political issue in, in really the best sense of the term, right? We would like this budget process, an improved budget process, to be an issue in the next set of uh, municipal elections. We think we have the right uh, platform for that in the sense that there have been major budget debates in the last couple of years. There are concerns emanating from a number of different and uh, a lot of work has been done in the past, as has been covered this morning. So we've got a great uh, place to start, and uh, with all of you here, I think we can, we can take this further today. Uh, so Better Budget Keel, I mean, we're not experts on the budget. Uh, we really are trying to be engineers and, and build on the work that's already been done. Uh, one thing that hasn't been covered to date, uh, we've talked about you know, the great work that journalists have done. Uh, we've talked about a lot of the great organizing they've done. There's actually an effort uh, before the last budget. I think uh, Beth Wilson was here uh, as one of the participants called the Toronto Open Budget Initiative, which was also an effort to open up the budget process. Uh, there was an effort to get uh, candidates to sign on uh, to a set of principles. And so there's already been a bunch of work done on this, and we want to build on that work and, and work with other teams here. Um, next slide. Uh, so the premise of this is, is pretty simple, right? Uh, we think we live in an amazing city. Uh, we think that part of uh, an amazing city is to have really good government. And in spite of the last few years, we think that there's really no reason why Toronto can't be a leader in high quality, innovative, uh, effective government. And that people can actually look to Toronto as an example uh, around the world in how to do this. Um, in fact, we've had that in the past, we think we can have it in the future. And it's an exciting time for cities around the world, right? Um, if you look at the United States, for example, a lot of people are saying that in spite of, you know, Federal government that's been shut down, uh, state governments that are facing huge financial challenges. The real innovation and creativity at, in public policy and government is happening at the city level. And this is true not only on state, but around the world. We see examples of that in Canada too, and there's no reason why Toronto, with this level of civic energy and talent and really consensus around public services and the importance of the urban forum, can't be a leader in this, right? Uh, so this is really simple. We think that the budget is a great place to start because of, of its importance to the city. Uh, and if we can get a good budget process, that is a good start on a path to uh, better government for the city. Let's go to the next slide. So budgets matter. We've covered a lot of reasons for that in the morning. Um, we, we think that the budget is, is probably, arguably, the most important public policy project or set of decisions that happens in the city every year. Uh, it's really about not just accounting and making the numbers work, but it's about where our public goods and our public resources get deployed. And uh, for that reason, focusing on this is very important. For 
Toronto could be improved for a number of reasons that we're going to talk about and we've covered in the talk uh, today. And um, we think this shouldn't be the purview of a narrow set of experts whose focus is uh, initial science or accounting. Those, those perspectives are extremely important, and I confess we have, to have, have work on budgets, and we need those people. Uh, but we also need a broader set of skills and perspectives uh, because we think you know, the budget is really a broader exercise than just an accounting exercise. And we think collaboration, as in other areas of city building, is the way of getting something better. Nobody has a monopoly on answers, uh, and we all have something to, uh, to add. Let's go to the next slide. This is a little bit hard to read. Um, many of you, thank you for filling out the survey when you registered. Uh, I think it's interesting to, to note, we ask people, what is your strongest skill? And uh, what I think is really neat today is we have a, a whole variety of skills here from uh, community engagement activism, community organizing folks, uh, to you know, party people, maybe there's party people down here, public policy <laughs> to be all. Uh, we've got some folks with backgrounds in design and data analysis, financial accounting. Um, so it's a very neat uh, mix of technical skills, uh, public facing skills, and uh, also creative uh, skills, uh, which, which makes me excited about the afternoon when we're going to try to do some you know, collaborative problem solving. Uh, really a model that I think is interesting to, to follow is everybody has something to learn and everybody has something to contribute. Uh, the budget can be an intimidating process, uh, but we're trying to make it uh, a little bit more accessible today and uh, we'd love for people to feel like they have something to, to add, even if they are not familiar with this idea. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, so despite the rhetoric, uh, there, there is no fiscal crisis in the city. Uh, I think this is something that everybody from all political stripes should be able to agree to. Uh, as has been pointed out by Matt, we do have to balance the budget of the year, that's the law. Uh, we have a pretty good credit rating in the city, so we can go out and borrow money for our capital projects. Uh, the credit rating agencies are not moving down, and actually I know what that feels like, having been in commercial government. Um, <laughs> the write-ups that Moody's and ERF does about the city are nothing like what they're doing about uh, the problem. And I'm not suggesting there's a, a crisis with the problem, but the city is in more <laughs> stable shape. Um, we, we have made some changes in terms of stuff that we use in the rainy day fund, and the prior year surplus, which is getting the technical language, the point is, you know, it, it has been a little bit more sustainable, and, you know, you've heard of Detroit, it's just a crazy analogy to use. It's nothing or nothing like Detroit. Detroit suffered a 20% drop in their property tax uh, revenues since 2008. If you've seen Matt's chart for Toronto, compare that to Detroit, and it's just ample statistics to talk about what the challenge of that city has faced. And although there, there are positive things happening in Detroit too, uh, in terms of rejuvenation uh, in the downtown area and, and things like that. But those narratives don't apply to Toronto. But, we'll go to the next slide. Uh, we've got big challenges. We've got some big things we need to build in the city. We've got public transit to build. We've got a big uh, backlog that, that Desmond referred to in, in, in social housing uh, of uh, some quarters of a billion dollars. There's something like $34 billion of public transit projects that uh, we prioritize that are not uh, properly funded. And uh, things like, are we prepared for climate change? Is our wastewater infrastructure up to date? It's just kind of the stuff that we need to build as a city. So for the big ambitious projects, the money's not there. Uh, we'll just go to the next slide. Um, you know, the, the, the big challenge is financially, I think Matt encapsulated this really well. Uh, the cost of public services grows with inflation or a little bit higher. I mean, if you look at sales tax or income tax, your homes are at four or five percent, and nobody tells you you're getting an increase uh, on those things. And the cost of public services grows, you know, more or less in line with that. In some cases, more than that. If you're talking health care, it tends to be six or seven percent. Uh, at the city, uh, when you say we're going to do a property tax rate of an uh, increase of 2%, that's going to go with a huge tax cut. Well, actually, that's below the rate of increase in uh, the cost of uh, public services. So it's not a crisis, but there is a, a, ch a challenge, a gap between the cost of services and the revenues coming in. And the city manager talks about this very recently in his presentation about the financial state of the city. In terms of process, uh, you know, there's a few areas that we think could use improvement, right? We think it's difficult to understand uh, the language that's used, the documents that are used tend to be fairly inaccessible. Uh, we think it is difficult to engage with uh, and to participate in for people, uh, and it's harder for marginalized people. But even people who are fairly plugged in the process find it you know, hard to understand and their input is not necessarily as meaningful as, as it should be. Uh, the lack of vision we think is an important thing, right? Uh, because the budget should really be about what kind of city do we want to build together and how do we want to allocate that over $10 billion of shared resources. And it is, it's like it's a 
so that you've got you know, what expenses would you put in that fund track and how do you close the gap? And, and yes, you need to do that, but it should be about some regard. The last point is a couple of records. Um, it feels very polarized, right? It feels like you know there's this sort of chunk of cuts on, on, on one side. There's a, well, we need to, you know, your taxes are way too high. We need to cut them on the other side. And does that really reflect uh, the state of our finances and the state of our, of our city? So we think there's room for better quality political debate uh, around fiscal issues. Just for more for that. How do we do it better? There's a set of principles that we think, you know, most people should be able to get behind. We should have a clear budget, clear communication. It should be accessible. Uh, it should be reflective of our shared vision for the city. Obviously, we need to think about this issue. Not, not everyone's going to agree, but it feels like a vision. Uh, we think we can use technology and uh, you know, digital innovation to help make it more accessible and give those better decisions. And we think we should have a more open process. Uh, municipal government, uh, a great form of government in the sense that it is actually inherently open. If you try to change the provincial or the federal budget process, uh, good luck with that because most of it happens behind closed doors. There are all sorts of interesting policy conversations that tend to happen in uh, briefing rooms, and uh, then all of a sudden you get a big thick book and say, here's your budget, thank you very much. We'll have some legislative committee hearings, but we're probably not gonna change anything. Uh, the city, everything is out there for the most part. The briefing notes are there, you can go online, you can see all the, the nice charts that Matt put up. Uh, increasingly, the city's putting up data. Obviously, that could be improved, but Good. So I, I think what's neat about the city government is there's an opportunity to be more transparent, be more open, and to engage citizens more. Plus, it's a, it's a level of government that people often tend to care most about and be the closest to. Uh, and so that's, a we think, an untapped opportunity. What are the tools to deal with that? These are the themes for our workshop this in the afternoon. So what we want to try to do together is to develop some actual solutions or the beginnings of some solutions against these five categories. So better communication will be a better uh, way of communicating budget information. Secondly, how can we engage citizens better? Uh, what's the process for that? What is the process for making a more visionary budget? How can we use things like data and technology uh, to engage citizens and, and civic uh, participants? And then could we use a form of participatory, uh, participatory budgeting, which has been used in other places, for part of uh, what the city spends? There's lots to learn from, from other places. Lots of cities around the world have done innovative things in Canada and abroad um, to improve their budget process. It's interesting, there's a startup in Nigeria, I highlight this one just because we're not going to talk about it necessarily in, in the breakout, but a startup <laughs> company that was basically all about how do we create data visualizations and use those data to help Nigerian citizens better understand their budgets. So in, you know they're doing very innovative things. We also think it's not just cities we can learn from. Other fields, right? We all work in organizations that do strategic planning and communications, and what can we learn from those? What can we learn from other sectors, nonprofits, um, businesses, about how they manage uh, resources, and other levels of government? Despite some of the shortcomings of the provincial and federal process, they do have some advantages in the sense that they have clear themes. You can get a book that's called The Budget, and, and people can, can download that. It's relatively coherent. Uh, so what can we learn from other levels of government and are we opening our, our horizons a little bit? Let's go to the next slide. Just to walk you through how the rest of today is going to work. So after lunch, we're going to break into five workshops. I'll talk a little bit more about how that will roll out. But we'll spend most of the afternoon in um, structured facilitation in those five workshops. Each workshop is going to try and produce a uh, document for the most part, those will be kind of a poster uh, that will reflect our facilitation and our solutions that we can capture at the end today. Um, we will wrap up with a bit of a discussion about where do we go from here and next steps. And then uh, most importantly for the, uh, the party people in the room, uh, we are gonna do a social at the Victor Cafe on Markham Street uh, to, to wrap up the day and so you can continue the conversations that have started uh, this morning. Let's go to the next a little more on the workshops. So um, we have several facilitators for each one, but these are uh, the leaders of each uh, workshop. Um, we've, uh, we've, we've got different rooms and posters set up uh, around the, the space. And what we're gonna do, and Joe will talk more about this, but you'll have an opportunity before lunch just to circulate 
take a look at the posters. The facilitator for each session will be there to talk to you about you know, what we're trying to accomplish in each facilitation. Uh, so you can, you can choose which group you want to be a part of. If you want to stay with one group and see it through for the full two hours, that's great. If you uh, want to move among groups, that's totally fine too, and get a taste of several different ones. Um, we uh, want to try. We want to try to capture as much of the day as possible. There's a great conversation happening on Twitter with the hashtag Better Budget. Uh, if you want to take photos and tweet them out, or capture them and send them to us afterwards, we're going to try to produce a bit of a document after this process uh, to capture what's been done. So that's great. Um, we want to try to create an atmosphere of creative, collaborative, and Frankly, fun. Um, and uh, we've also got a, a space for those of you who use Work Open. It's basically like a shared, almost like a shared uh, text or word document that people can type ideas on, and it shows up in different colors of text depending on where you are. So if you want to use that as a, as a form for collaboration as well, um, the, the address is on there at workopen.org uh, forward slash BBB. So that's a little bit on the workshop. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, yeah. It's sensitive for that for that mention in the thing. Put it in caps. Uh, we did a poll with you all filled out which workshop or topics interest you. Uh, the, the winner, we were having a little internal competition. Uh, participatory budgeting was the, the winner, although there was a, a last minute surge by budget as, as strategy revision uh, in terms of different <laughs> levels of interest. Um, we ended up merging these two workshop topics together, data, budget data and uh, innovation budget tools and apps into one workshop. And then consultation and engage. Anyway, you don't have to go to the workshop to sign up. You said you're interested in that's totally fine. We just want to get a sense of who was interested in what workshops. Uh, and we can have some large and some small. And part of the point is just to get people thinking and collaborating. So, uh, so it's pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, actually, no, we'll leave it for the minute there. Uh, we'll talk about the next step. So, uh, thank you. lunch brought out very shortly, and I think we're going to clear some of these chairs just to make room uh, for the sandwiches and the food. And please um, sit anywhere that, oh, and there's water on the side table too, um, if organized well for them, because for some reason water is always the last beverage, I think, that we know. I used to think first. <laughs> but it's actually over on the side table. And use, use the whole cafe. Uh, don't really have to sit with your chair and eat lunch. It can be spread out and be comfortable. And that's it. And then we'll, um, so after lunch, have a look around and we'll start our sessions at 1 o'clock. So if you can, if you can get some food and relax, we can bring you to the session. So come on, we'll see you at 1 o'clock.